Hello! Hi! How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing Friday today. Today's video is going to be a continuation of the series, I guess it is. It's gonna be a series, I guess, of uh, doing kind of a weekly drama roundup for you guys while I do Get Ready With Me's. I used to do these videos a lot called the My Thoughts series, and while I really liked those, I'm probably still gonna do My Thoughts videos occasionally when I feel very strongly about things. Uh, this was a good way for me to talk about things that I care about, but maybe weren't worthy of an entire video. Today is going to be probably a long one because so much happened this week. I feel like nothing happened last week, like absolutely nothing. Everything was pretty quiet amongst everyone. Everyone was really living harmoniously. And then at the very beginning of this week, so much kicked off um, and I was like, um, so we're just gonna talk about it. I think the biggest thing to talk about because so much happened in such a short amount of time is with James Charles. I feel bad because I feel like he's always the person people are talking about and I'm sure it's annoying um, to like listen to him. I'm annoyed hearing about James Charles but some of the stuff that happened this week actually was like really it was weird because he started the week looking pretty bad and then ended it looking really good because somebody else ended up looking worse. Um, that's basically how I described it in my head. So at the beginning of this week, James Charles was in the UK and he w did like a Morphe meet and greet. Um, and I feel like nothing can happen with Morphe without there being some sort of drama uh, because every time something goes on with Morphe, there's some tea going on as well. And of course, after the meet and greet, where James Charles had over 8,000 people show up for his Morphe meet and greet. And it, this is kind of an important fact here and something I wanna touch on is that while this was definitely, like people were definitely there for James Charles. Um, like there's no question about that. There's no denying that he is incredibly popular and incredibly successful in this industry um, while they were there because James Charles was there this wasn't a James Charles event this was a Morphe event that had a guest who was James Charles and that becomes important because of course right after the meet and greet that was incredibly successful where he met so many people and so many people came out to support him he subtweeted uh, a 13 year old <laughs> So there was, I guess, this kid named Ruben who I've actually seen before on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Um, he's a little boy who does makeup and he got famous because Ellen made him, he went on the Ellen show, he got famous because of like a viral video and then he got to like meet Ellen, he met Kim Kardashian through Ellen, like it was like this whole adorable thing. I think the kid is so cute. I have never heard him ever be involved in any sort of drama. Like there's been no scandals around this kid. And I actually hadn't have heard about, I hadn't heard of him really since the whole Alan thing. So I was pleasantly surprised to check out his Instagram and see that he has like a nice following. He has 500,000 followers on Instagram. He's doing like well for himself in a community that's pretty oversaturated with people. So like good for him. But James Charles subtweeted him. It was basically like, he deleted it now and unfortunately I didn't screenshot it. There's a lot of drama channel videos talking about the situation already. But he alluded basically that this kid gave bashed his palette, gave his palette a horrible negative review, DM'd him, had the gall to DM and ask why he unfollowed him, and then asked if he could show up to the event, and his team told the person no, and the person showed up anyway, and then pretended the event was about themselves. First of all, let's start with just the beginning of that, which was bashed his palette. I watched the video that Ruben did. He did the video with Amanda Ensing, who was problematic in her own way. Uh, I'm actually using this Fenty concealer. Um, one of you guys sent this to me. <laughs> Thank you, girl. Uh, she sent me the Fenty concealer for like a birthday, like whatever thing. Uh, and it was really, really, really sweet. And I've been testing it out. I'm gonna have some opinions up on it soon, but so far I've been liking it. I watched the video that Ruben did where he talked about the palette and he didn't bash it, that's a lie. Um, he tried to even make excuses for why the palette maybe wasn't working. If anything, he was giving constructive criticism on the palette. Um, I just felt like that was a reach to say, if, if that is a bash of your palette to you, then you cannot handle any sort of constructive criticism about your products and you should stop putting out products. Because if you can't even take a slight criticism of, oh, this shade didn't really blend that well, you shouldn't be putting out makeup. That was first and foremost. That kid did not bash his products. There's not, it blew my mind that he was trying to spin this to be like a bashing session. He's like, he tried to bash it for views. It's like, maybe it did it ever occur to you that he just didn't like it? Did that ever cross your mind? This Ruben boy, who's 13, mind you, he went on social media and basically was like, I don't know why James has a problem with me. I don't have a problem with him. 
uh, I didn't feel like I bashed his palette. Morphe, he's a Morphe affiliate. So this kind of comes back to what I was saying earlier, where this isn't James Charles's event. James Charles is a guest at a Morphe event. This person, Ruben, this kid, was also a guest at a Morphe event. He claims James Charles never contacted him, his team never contacted him, he never contacted his team. He claims all this stuff. And like at that point, it's a he said, she said. Like if, if Ruben was contacted by James's team, Sure, but I don't know if he was. There's no proof that he was contacted. There's no evidence that he was or wasn't. So that's kind of a he said, she said situation. However, James further, what kind of really, I think, ticked people off about this, besides the fact that he's trying to beef, he just had this immense success and he's still just trying to beef with like a 13 year old. Like besides all of that, he then went on to tweet at people because some people were like, this isn't a good look for you. Like starting drama after this amazingly successful day that you had, it's just not a good look. And James went on to say that in the world of social media, people need to learn to grow up very fast, that he was never allowed to use his age as an excuse. So this 13 year old shouldn't be either. Which first of all, James was not in the game until he was 16. And if you don't know the difference between a 13 year old and a 16 year old, I have nothing to say to you about that. However, I kind of, I find it a little bit ironic that he's trying to turn around and say that he was never given an excuse for his age when he has done some incredibly racist and problematic things and has still garnered a following of almost 14 million people. I don't know how he can say, with the excuse being, well, he was young. I've even said it in my videos. I've given him a, a pass because I sit here and I go, well, he's young. Like, I remember when I was young, I made mistakes. I maybe was a little too X, Y, Z. He's constantly <laughs> given an excuse for his age. So I think people were a little annoyed. I know I was a little annoyed when he tried to turn around and say that he was never given an excuse for his age. Also, he didn't have influencers that were so much bigger than him. Ruben has 500,000 subscribers and James has 14 million. James never had somebody with 14 million subscribers when he was just starting out in the makeup game try to come for him and say negative things for him. This poor kid is 13 years old and he's now getting death threats because James's stands are insane, which James knew would happen. James knew people would find out who this kid was and go after him. Like, he's not an idiot. He knows how social media works. Anybody who claims that they're a social media person and then also tries to claim that they don't understand the impact of social media is a liar. Like, I'm so sorry. You're a liar. Um, you know what's going to happen. Happen. Regardless, the whole thing was a mess. James, in my opinion, I think came out of it looking very bad. And honestly, I subscribed to Ruben because I was like, you're a cute little kid and you don't deserve all the hate you're getting from this massive mega social media star. Like even, and then the whole thing was like, oh, well, he tried to make it seem like all of those 8,000 people were there for him. He did post one of, to his Instagram story being like, I can't believe you guys recognized me and knew my name. And in the store, and he didn't say, oh, but I'm here for James Charles's meet and greet. Like, you're right. He he didn't mention that. He definitely made it seem like people knew who he was, like whatever. But he is, again, he's freaking 13 years old. So I don't know. Like obviously everybody knew that they were, you were there for James. Like nobody was under the impression that this many people came for this kid. It's just ridiculous to me that James Charles can have so much success and still not be happy. And it truly makes me almost kind of sad for him because I, I feel like he's always just, there's one more thing he's got to push. Like one more thing he's mad about. He had, just enjoy the fact that 8,000, 8,000 people, that, that's like quadruple the size of my hometown, was in one place cheering your name. Like just be excited about that and happy about that. And maybe don't feel the need to bash other people people. That's my thoughts on that whole thing. So then later in the week, uh, G because the 8,000 people showed up in the UK for James Charles, he was getting a lot of more traditional media attention. Like news people were talking about him. Um, radio shows were talking about him. Kind of attention that YouTubers don't usually get. And the reason for that was because so many people showed up for him. Allegedly, like one of the big places in the UK, like a big traffic circle was like gridlocked. And it, it took people hours to get home. There's so much traffic because of this event, which makes sense because that just makes sense. So news people were talking about him. And there was a whole incident where he like called in a radio show that was talking about him because they the guy said he didn't know who he was and he was shocked that this person didn't know who he was and that's like a whole thing but like I don't know that all happened and people were kind of giving crap about that that's like the least of the things I cared about this week that happened with James the big thing was a news reporter in the UK two news reporters were covering the story and they were talking about how they were stuck in traffic for like an hour and a half and how they don't even know who this kid is which to be fair of course they don't because even though he has 14 million subscribers there are eight 80 billion people in the world, there are probably some people who aren't a part of the sisterhood. Like, let's be honest. So they didn't know who he was. 
was. And one of the guys, one of the news reporters, was talking to his female co-host and he was like, I just don't get it. Like you do your makeup beautifully and nobody follows your makeup. Like why does he have so many followers just for liking makeup? Which is rude. Um, and then she goes on to say, and this is the part that I was like, oh bitch. Uh, she goes on to say, well that's because I take my makeup advice from a woman and not from a man. Okay, so I know I just spent like 10 minutes talking crap about James and I stand by all of the things I said. However, to say something so, and if they said this about any, even if somebody said this about like Jeffree Star, who I openly don't like, if you said this about anybody, is that so incredibly sexist and disgusting? Like what disgusting behavior? And I heard some people trying to spin it like she meant something else, but she said this. No, she said what she meant. She meant that boys shouldn't be doing makeup. And I guess like, I guess my problem with this is that like it's 20 fucking 19. Excuse me for swearing, but it's 20 fucking 19. And if you can't get your head out of your ass enough, <laughs> I'm just swearing out because I'm pissed. If you can't get your head out of your ass and realize that anybody can do whatever they want, I, I was so mad when I saw that. Sometimes I feel like we've come so far in this community, especially the makeup community, because I feel like we really are about inclusion and anybody can wear makeup and, you know, anybody can do their hair or wear wigs or put on whatever clothes they want to wear. Like, we're so about that in this community. And then I hear things like that and I just remember that there are so many people who don't think that way. And it's just so gross to me to make a sexist, disgusting comment like that. I don't know, that really bothered me. And I think that made James honestly turned his week around. <laughs> like, well, what from really disliking him to uh, being on his team in a matter of minutes. But I found that to be uh, disgusting. So <laughs> it's already started swearing. I get really passionate about that stuff because I just think it's so ugly. Also, I guarantee that girl is not doing her own makeup. She's a freaking newscaster. How many newscasters do you know that do their own makeup for on-air appearances? That's all I'm gonna say about that. Besides that, there have been a few other interesting things going on this week. Danielle Bergoli, who's, I hate that I'm talking about this, but I do feel like it's really relevant and I'm interested to, I, I have my own opinions and I'll tell you guys, but I'm also interested to hear your opinions about this. Uh, Danielle Bergoli, who if you don't know who that is, she's also known as like, I don't know how you say her name. I don't know if it's bad baby, bad baddie. I don't know how you say her name, uh, but she's the girl from the Dr. Phil, the like catch me outside thing. But she also has kind of turned that into like a legitimate uh, career. She has like literally 6 million YouTube followers and she gets a lot of views. Um, so she's doing well for herself. Like say what you will about how she got her come up. Like she's making it work for herself. And at some point you have to commend that. However, she just got signed to a brand called Copycat Beauty. She got paid $900,000 hairs to, so again, like, honestly, at a certain point, I have to commend the hustle of turning a Dr. Phil meme into a almost million dollar contract. Like, I have to almost commend that in a way. I, it says a lot about what our society is, but we can talk about that at a different time. Um, but she signed a $900,000 contract with this brand called Copycat Beauty, who is basically saying that they're like Shop Hush, the Shop Hush, like brands that really blatantly dupe other makeup, uh, but instead of like playing it kind of coy and being like, oh, well, maybe we're Natasha De Denona dupe, but maybe we're not, they're blatantly saying this is a copy of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. Like they're blatantly saying that. They're saying compare this palette, the ABH one at $42 to this copycat one that's $8. I think it's brought up a really interesting conversation of is stuff like that okay? is blatant duping that's not just actual copying like because you get you have fake makeup which is makeup that is blatantly ripping somebody off like packaging con they, it's the James Charles palette but it's not actually the James Charles palette and they sell it for cheaper and usually those contain really harmful chemicals really gross stuff and then you have stuff like shop hush where it's a duping service so it's not claiming to be the other product but it's claiming to be a much cheaper version of this other product I'm using the Midas cosmetics resurrection palette this is made palette of the week. You guys can check out my tutorial Tuesdays to see what palette of the week it is, but um, I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about 
copycat makeup. I, I don't know, because in one standpoint, it's like, well, somebody worked very hard to create that original concept, and it's not really fair that you're offering it at a lower level. But at the same time, for me, it's kind of like, if I don't have the money to buy Kat Von D, I'm not gonna buy that Kat Von D palette anyway. So by me buying the copycat, I don't know why Kat Von D's my response, but I remember that big thing with Makeup Revolution where it was like, she copied, they copied her Shade and Light palette or whatever. To me, it's like, if I was gonna, if I don't have the money to buy that Too Faced palette anyway, and I'm not gonna buy the Too Faced chocolate bar palette anyway, and I see that this brand has come out with a copy of it, so I buy that instead, I don't really understand Too Faced isn't losing any customers because of that. High-end brands aren't really losing customers. You know what I mean? I see the sides of both argument with copycatting makeup. I think some big issue people had this week too with copycat beauty. Danielle Bergoli actually went to Jeffree Star's house and gave him some of the makeup and he reviewed it and I guess he didn't really like most of it. He approved some of it and he didn't some of it. But people were kind of saying like what if this was Jeffree Star Cosmetics? Like what if this was your brand? Um, if like I think Manny is gonna, re Manny said he was gonna review it or some other person who has a brand said they were gonna review it. People were like, well, how would you feel if this was your brand that was being copied and being blatantly compared? Cause it's not only that they're copying it and then kind of selling it as something else, they're blatantly saying this is a ripoff of X, Y, and Z thing. At the end of the day, there's definitely a market for fake makeup. So I think it's always going to exist. But I think it kind of depends person to person if you're ethically okay with that. I don't know really how I feel. And I'd be really interested to hear you guys' opinions because I'm kind of in between on this whole thing. Like I get, I see it from both sides. I get the perspective from both things. Um, so I would love to hear what you guys have to think about not only copycat beauty, but just copycat makeup in general brands that are kind of known for making dupes of other palettes. I'd love to know your guys' opinions on that. Other things I found interesting this week is somebody I've never talked about in this channel before, but her name is Zoella. You probably know who she is. Um, <laughs> I mean, she's pretty famous. Um, she's kind of before my time on YouTube. I never really have watched her channel just because when I came on the scene of YouTube in like 2016, she wasn't as big. I guess she's still pretty big. She's definitely like getting over a million views a video and she has a ton of subscribers. So, like she's doing fine, but she wasn't as big when I kind of popped on the scene. Um, so I never really got into her, but I've heard about all of the scandals, like the advent calendar scandal, and I've heard about all of the drama with Zoella, like I'm up to date on all of that. Um, however, it came out this week that I guess the police in the UK are threatening her with jail time, which I think is fascinating. Uh, they're threatening her with jail time because she doesn't disclose her sponsorships. This brings up a fascinating conversation and was super relevant because number one, when you're at that caliber, and she's been warned like a ton of Zoella, like she is notorious for not disclosing her sponsorships, for not abiding by guidelines to keep consumers informed. Like she is notorious for doing those things. But I kind of have noticed because I'm used to the beauty community where people really did used to not disclose anything. And say what you will about here for the tea, she's definitely not my favorite person, uh, but she definitely started somewhat of a revolution with inside the beauty community of exposing people for not disclosing sponsorships and kind of forcing influencers to start disclosing their makeup sponsorships. I feel like she was a real pioneer in that and I actually like think she did a service to the community because I do think gurus definitely disclose sponsorships more than they used to and when they don't, like Zoella's not, they get called out for it a lot more seriously, which I think is fantastic. Do I think Zoella should go to jail? Uh, no, probably not. I don't think she'd do well in jail um, and I don't think it's like a jailable offense. I personally just think these people need to be paying fines. Like I, the second you start taking away their money, they're going to take this so much more seriously. The problem with the FTC right now is that they just keep giving warnings to people who don't disclose. They don't follow through. And the punishment for that should not be jail time. It should be you have to pay a really, really, really hefty fine. And you have to pay out of your own pocket for deceiving your audience. That's personally what I think should be happening. I don't think Zoella should be going to jail. I do think it's so annoying that she can't just disclose things at, at this day and age. Like truly think that's ridiculous. But something else that I've been noticing, cause I, like I was saying in the beauty community, I feel like it's definitely getting better for most people. There are people who still aren't disclosing sponsorships on YouTube. And I guess I should have realized that, but I haven't. I found this girl named Gabby DiMartino, who is Fancy Vlogs by Gab. She's part of the like Nikki and Gabby channel. I just found their channel 
pretty recently uh, and I was watching one of her vlogs because I was like kind of interested in their content they make like lifestyle content and her vlogs are like I found after I found this out that she's a very problematic person she's done some really problematic stuff but I didn't really know that when I was, I was just kind of casually binging um, and I was watching some of her stuff and I noticed that she did an ad and I was like, that's interesting. She didn't say in the video that this was an ad. So I went to the description box because I was like, she probably said it in the description box at least. Like you're supposed to say it in both, but like maybe she put it in just the description box. Some people still do that where they like hide it in their description box or whatever. Uh, and then I see the link for it and there's no disclosing that it's an ad. And then I go all the way through the entire description box just to check and see, no disclosing of an ad. Uh, so it was a blatant ad. It was for like an app. It was for like a gambling video game app. And I was shocked. Uh, so I went to a couple of her other videos and she literally <laughs> does not ever, ever disclose sponsorships. I just found that to be absolutely nutty. And then I actually tweeted about it because I saw that Tea Spill posted a video about her doing a sort of Kenza Cosmetics-esque brush scam on her Instagram. And I retweeted it and I was like, you know, I just found this girl and she doesn't disclose sponsorships ever. Uh, and one of you guys actually told me that there's a website you can go to where you can um, kind of make a complaint against a person. So I'm going to leave that link in the description. And if you guys care about this as much as I do, which you probably don't because I care too much about things all the time. Uh, but if you care too, you see someone grossly uh, just ignoring the FTC laws because there are laws. It's illegal to not disclose. That's why Zoella is being threatened with jail time is because it's literally illegal. Um, if you see somebody not following those guidelines and it bothers you, you, uh, go to that link because I think the problem is like there's so many there's so many things the FTC has to cover and YouTube is such a new space to have to be monitoring that I feel like it actually would be kind of hard to keep up with everyone uh, so if you guys are bothered by it like I was uh, just report it <laughs> not to be like that girl that's like oh, report it but like report it uh, let people know that you also have a problem with this because I think it's good to report things when things are illegal and wrong. Uh, by the way, I got the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. Uh, it was some, one of you guys tweeted at me and were like, they're selling this on BoxyCharm. You can use your charms. And they knew I had said that I wanted it and I had enough charms to get it. So I decided to just go for it. I hope my makeup looks good on camera because in person it looks absolutely awful. One of those days. I think we're done. All right. So that is the look for today. And that's kind of my roundup of stuff that happened that I cared about this week. I'm sure there's a lot more you could go find and check out. But those were kind of the big things for me. There was one other big thing that happened this week with an indie brand on Instagram called Lashes by Lena. And I cared about that one a lot. So I'm actually going to do a separate video talking about stuff. Stuff like to do. I had a video planned anyway to do with a topic kind of similar to that so I'm kind of combining the two together for a video tomorrow I feel like I couldn't fit that into one video and just kind of put it in this type of roundup um so that's that for that so if you want to hear what I have to say about that uh that'll be tomorrow but yeah I hope you guys like this video and if you did please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither honestly just so happy you're watching me thank you for being here I love you guys so so much and I will see you in the next one bye Thank you.